Hey there, YouTube. Farm Riggin here. Welcome back to the channel. We're back out here in the uh, back lot, and uh, I figured I would do a little uh, a little video. I mentioned uh, in a previous video to you guys um, about a, a gooseneck dump trailer that uh, I ended up uh, building. I don't know how many years ago that was, and uh, I said that if you guys wanted to see a review and uh, kind of an overview and everything of it, um, I would go ahead and make a video about that. So uh, we're in the back here, and uh, that's, what I, uh, that's what I decided that I'd make this video about, and uh, also kind of give you a, uh, a uh, sneak peek into the next project that's gonna be on the channel here. All right, so this is the, uh, this is the gooseneck dump trader that uh, I built. It's uh, hooked to my uh, hooked to my truck. Uh, excuse the the filthy truck. This is uh, this is my daily driver. You'll see this um, at some point on the on the channel here. It's a uh, Ford Super Duty that uh, I put uh, one ton running gear underneath it and a twelve valve uh, Cummins in it. So uh, drop in the, in the comments if you'd like to see me do a. Uh, a review video on this truck i've had this truck for oh i don't know how many years since i did the uh did the swap i think i've got about a hundred and some thousand miles on the on the swap at this point um best thing you can do by the way to one of these fords is put a 12 valve in it um extremely reliable truck on the uh, motor department but uh, i do i digress here here is the um the gooseneck dump trader that i built um it is a 16 foot um dump trailer it's got 7,000 pound uh axles underneath it um four foot four foot sides on it and a uh scissor hoist on it um i was needing a uh <clears throat> i was needing a dump trailer to uh haul some things and uh i had been renting renting trailers and uh, that sort of thing uh, to do what I needed to do <clears throat> and I decided I wanted a uh, I wanted a dump trailer um, myself and I went and priced them out and um, <laughs> I was quite shocked at the price they're very very expensive uh, and this was this was oh I'm gonna say six seven years ago when i when i did this so you can imagine how expensive they are now because uh, it seems like trailers have just gone up in price since then between steel and everything else that's uh it's been going up so i decided i priced out all the steel and everything and basically at the time when i did this um it was uh it was going to be either um pretty much the same price to to build or to buy a dump trader because at the time i didn't have a, a big enough shop to uh to actually get this in there and work on it and everything and so i had to hire out and farm out some of the some of the stuff on it uh to a buddy of mine and uh so but the thing is um if i built it i could get it exactly what i wanted um and i'll kind of take you around and show you a few of the things that i wanted uh a little bit different um on this trailer than a store a store bought one um i believe it took me the better part of a summer to build this working on it um here and there so uh, i'll just kind of uh start start at the beginning here at the front of the trailer and uh, we'll just kind of go around, go around the trailer, and I'll tell you what I like about it and what I wish I had done different on it. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Okay, so starting up here to neck, um, I went down to just the um, the local. Uh, oh, it's like it's like a trailer supply place, and I just got a, a gooseneck, a gooseneck coupler. Um, Doing this again, I would probably um, try to get something more on the lines of um, a little bit different. They're set up just a just a tickle tickle different on uh, 
a couple of the other traders that I've been around and I would probably change that. I'm, I'm nitpicking here because I built the thing. Um, but it honestly isn't that big of a, that big of an issue. Now, when you attach your safety chains to a trailer, <clears throat> gooseneck trailer, um, you can't really weld the chain to the trailer. So I ended up building, uh, taking and bending some rebar and uh, welding it to the bottom end like that. That's how I attach the uh, safety chains here. Now I'll take you over and I'll show you my uh, big text trader in here in a minute of how they do it. And if I was gonna do it again, um, that is how that is how I would do it. Um, I gusseted it. Let's see if I can crawl up on this slippery truck here. It's a little icy outside. I gusseted it at the top and at the bottom there. Um, as you can see, there's, there's water pooling there. Um, I need to do some sort of, I need to drill some sort of a small hole or whatever to let that water drain. Um, but I used really heavy components on this trader when I built it, um, just because it was a gooseneck dump trader. And we all know with dump traders, what happens, you, uh, you put way too much weight in these things at some point in their life you're trying to get a you know something cleaned out or one more bucket or whatever the case may be you end up overloading these things and i wanted it strong enough that the frame itself wouldn't be an issue and um i would have limiting the limitation would be the um the hoist and i'll show you i'll show you in a minute but um as far as the gusseting for the because you know all these gooseneck trader tongues they have this weird um this weird shape um some of them don't but you get a little bit more clearance if you build the uh the tongue this way the frame is built out of 12 inch i beam i believe it's 16 pound i beam 16 pounds per foot i don't i don't not, i'm not 100 percent sure on that but i do know it's 12 inch i beam um what i did here for the gussets I don't know if you can see this. I took a piece of box tubing and I cut it at a diamond um, or triangle shape like that. Um, I've seen some guys use like a, a piece of flat bar and kind of bend it in there. Um, and I guess that works That works pretty good. Um, the biggest thing is I feel like this is a little bit stronger because you have uh, structural, um, you know, it's just you're, you're, you're getting more... Um, uh, triangles and that sort of thing in a in a shape like this and it, it produces a little bit stronger stronger joint there um, moving back here to the trailer <clears throat> this is something that uh, when I was building it I wanted to do these triangle gussets on the back of the trailer I I feel that um, trailer manufacturers um, I mean, I guess they're, you know, they're specced and engineered and everything like they're supposed to. But I feel like they skimp on the metal on these things. Um, the big text trader I have is just some eighth inch sheet that they kind of bent. Um, yeah, it's probably strong enough, but I wanted something a little bit stronger. So this is a piece of uh, quarter inch, quarter inch plate that I cut into a uh, triangle there, triangle shape um, and uh, welded it in there. Um, I did a uh, flat bar on the top. I don't know if you can see, um, and cut it and made it, you know, so it overlaps the top of the, uh, top of the tongue there on the bottom of the, um, tongue itself. I've got a piece of uh, flat bar, um, that runs, I think this is what, 3 16 something like that, that runs from the front, um, back back there a little bit um i guess i could have gone a little bit farther but um with the with the flat bar there but i've had zero issues on the frame of this trader and i i have i have loaded it before um this trader can handle quite a bit of weight um moving over here i've got a, a toolbox um i haven't opened this up in a while let's see we'll see what's inside <clears throat> So there's where I put the uh, the pump and the relay and all of that that stuff. Um, hindsight's twenty twenty. I would have used a um, a pump with a bigger reservoir, and I need to get a pump with a bigger reservoir because it it dumps um, 
seven eighths of the way, but not that last little bit. And you go, well, that's not too big of an issue. You, you can just kind of jerk it. Well, there's some stuff you haul that um, you just can't. Uh, you just can't. It won't come out of the come out of the bed there. And uh, that was that's something I need to address because um, you need the full full uh, dumping range on a on a trailer trailer like this um it's just got a manual tarp i would love to have an electric tarp that may be something that i i upgrade in the future um but it works really good i got the uh tie down rails um all down the side of the trailer here and i opted to put stake pockets and rub rail at the top uh, mainly i can be really stupid and put sides on this thing <laughs> for hauling stuff and uh it actually on the farm here um it does come in handy for hauling like wood chips and that sort of thing. You can, uh, you know, they're not typically, they're not very heavy sometimes and you can get a little bit more capacity, <clears throat> capacity out of it when you do something like this. Um, the sides the, the metal for the trader, I used pretty much all brand new steel, um, except for the diamond plate. Um, that is something that I would have changed. I was trying to save money when I built this and I used used um, steel. I repurposed some some diamond plate. Now, I don't know if you can see um, the difference here from the sides of the trailer versus the end of the trailer here. The end of the trailer, I had to buy a brand new sheet. Now, you can look at the difference. Now, that is, you know right in the front so that catches all the spray from the road all the rocks everything and you can see the condition of that right there this is from a, a gash that somebody when they were loading me they hooked me with the excavator there um but uh you can see the condition of that paint on that diamond plate versus this over here I mean, it's a mess. It's a disaster. And the farther back you go, the worse it gets. Um, this steel had a coating on it. Um, and you can see I had it sandblasted. So that was that was extra cost uh, number one. Um, I spent many, many hours um, wire wheeling it. Um, I was when I was welding it. I mean, it just it, it was. It was a mess. I would highly, highly recommend if you're gonna do a project like this and you want the paint to last and not spend so much time on the prep work, do not use, use steel. Um, I'm a proponent of, of, you know, recycling steel and using, you know, old pieces of steel to rebuild things and everything that's fine but for a trailer like this or a project that you're building that you want to last a long time um do not use use steel it just it, it comes back and it bites you in the long run um you might save a little bit in the beginning but um it it, it, it doesn't pay just just don't do it so that is probably the biggest regret um next to another another thing which i'll show you here in a little while um, that I have about building this trailer. I wish I used brand new steel. Now I'm going to, I got a buddy of mine who, um, has a really high powered sandblaster. And now that this paint is old and flaking and everything, I'm going to take this thing up to him at some point here soon. Cause you can see there's a lot of rust starting to form on this thing and, uh, have him sandblast the whole thing and, uh, repaint it. Um, I'll see if I can find some pictures and, uh, insert them in the video here of what this thing looked like brand you know right after i finished building it it was it was a really nice looking trailer um but anyway so moving on um i put seven thousand pound two seven thousand pound um axles underneath it um using the i don't know if you can see i did notice it till my buddy pointed it out a while back that those rims are totally different in their style and uh, now that he pointed it out, it bugs me every time I look at the stupid trader. <laughs> so at some point, I need to get some new rims for it. And uh, don't paint the rims um, 
on a on a trailer that you know or a truck or whatever that goes down the road have them powder coated um i seem it, it seems like they last a little bit longer um even though i continue to paint uh rims and everything i mean they've it's lasted for quite a while you know the, this rim this rim was i didn't even prep it i just rattle canned it and you can see the results of doing that but uh, i actually pre prepped this um these other rims and uh they've lasted pretty well that way but uh, just have them powder coated it doesn't cost very much and it's just it's just better in the long run so um moving Moving along the side here, um, one thing you'll come to learn about me on this channel is um, I like my lights on uh, on things, whether it's the truck, uh, trailers, semis, uh, whatever. I I like my lights. I don't know. It's just it's just me. I probably put way too many lights on things, but uh, I don't know. I think it looks cool. It's just something I've done for years on on things. So um, put the mud flaps mud flaps on um i wired this thing in the back here for um for reverse lights i never actually put them in i was going to put uh, reverse lights either here or here or something like that and uh never never actually um uh, did do that um maybe one day i will but uh i just haven't seen the haven't seen the need. I haven't needed to see when I'm backing up with this thing. I mean, I have, but it's not been a, not been a high priority. Um, I did end up cause ma mainly because I was, I used to do a little bit of tree service. Um, more specifically, I worked with a buddy of mine who did tree service and I would get the, the chips for, uh, for the farm here. And, uh, we would hook the chipper or I would back this thing up to the back of the chipper and he would blow, uh, blow into me here. And um, I decided to put a receiver hitch on the back, not to tow the chipper around, you know, on the road, but to tow it around the job site and to keep it attached to the to the trailer itself, because um, I would oftentimes uh, feed the chipper with the uh, with my mini excavator, and the chipper would bounce around a lot or whatever if it wasn't hooked to something. So it just worked out better that way. So I put the hitch there and and uh that hitch works uh pretty well um you notice the uh, latch uh, combination here so this was my buddy's idea um to when i was working in tree service i used to get a lot of firewood from my buddy um and he would load it with logs or i'd get it from other tree services and they'd load me up with logs and uh his concern was that these doors and these sides like usual traders would um would splay out you know the the side would kind of do this and um he wanted to make sure that that would not happen so he ended up putting a chain binder uh here to uh pull the pull the doors together should they start to uh start to pull out well he built this so stout when he helped me uh, reinforce this trailer after I built it that um, <laughs> I've never had that problem and it's actually um, when we welded and I'll show you over here this is another thing that I would totally do again on a trailer um, we put in these triangle gussets on the back of the trailer here it's just a piece of box tubing I think is what we used um, back here and um, that keeps the side from doing doing this um extremely strong that way um and i'll show you how the inside is so stuff so stuff doesn't build up in the corners like that um this trader does not flex when you have it loaded up with logs or whatever it never i mean when we did that the the heat warping warped this whole side in and i'll show you when i go to open it here might as well do that now let's see here see it's not easy to open there we go and you can see up here that um it uh, is touching it's very very tight at the top because of the the angled uh angled corners and uh he was trying to make it sort of that way so that it would splay out well it never did splay out 
um, I try to take care of this trailer because I actually do like this trailer. And so um, it never did splay out and make it easier to open the doors. <laughs> so, so what we did here is we just got that piece of box tubing and then we put a piece of plate in a triangle shape that runs back here. There's snow and ice and I was hauling some manure with it. Um, but uh, nothing ever gets built up here. And um, that is a design I would, I would very much do over again. It was very, very good design um, that way. Um, the floor in this thing, I can't remember how thick the floor is, but it's a pretty thick floor. And I remember when I was doing it, another buddy of mine, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, this is a gooseneck trailer. Well, as you can see, um, even with that thick steel, it's still got uh, wows in it from uh from loading rocks and whatever else logs and that sort of thing in it um but it hasn't hasn't broke out or anything like that it's just wowed a little bit um i've got six d rings in it three down that side and uh three down that side um i have ramp pockets for some ramps that i have um I anymore I rarely ever put anything in this trader equipment wise but uh, I used to when I was helping my buddy in the tree service we used to load skid steers and excavators and stuff in the trailer so I had those um had those made um we had to guard the uh the little uh latch for the trailer we had to guard it with some heavy plate and um I've had rocks big boulders and stuff like that in this trailer and uh, nothing's ever bent um, these, these ramp pockets, um, you can see they're a little bit bent, um, but nothing else is, uh, has been overall. It's been a very, very good trader. Now I mentioned that there was another thing that, um, I wish I'd done differently about this trader besides, uh, recycling steel for the sides. And that is the length. When I did the measurements on this thing, I wanted a 16 foot trailer. Well, it is 16 feet from outside to outside. You cannot stick a 16 foot log or a 16 foot board in this trailer because it is almost, it's not even six inches too long. You can't get the doors shut. The first time that happened, I was so mad <laughs> that that happened. So I would make it, um, probably almost 17 feet in the trailer just so that you could have um a couple inches of leeway for like that let's say a 16 foot six log that would get put in here um that is the only regret major regret that i have about this trailer other than the steel is that i did not make it um you know a full 16 foot inside inside the box um the other reason um one of the big factors when I was building a trader is the traders that you get, um, at least the gooseneck traders that I was looking at that were not a tandem dual trader. I didn't necessarily want a tandem dual trailer. Um, they were quite narrow inside the box. I can't remember what the measurements were, but um, they were not as wide as this trader. This trader on the outside up at the top where the stake pockets are is a full eight foot six wide so inside here you're talking it's an eight foot two something like that in the box by the time you figure out the two by four box tubing on each side and the and uh the extra thing no no that's not the right math that would be eight foot just shy of eight foot on the inside sorry i'm thinking no it would be it would be about eight foot on the inside because you got six yeah, something something like that. You get the you get you get the picture. Uh the other traders that I was looking at, um, I wanna say they were only around seven foot on the inside, which which kind of puzzled me. Um, because you gain a lot of extra capacity in just that extra, you know, ten inches to a foot. But um but anyway, uh moving on around the trailer. Um, you can see the other side. The other side isn't as bad. There was wasn't as much paint um on uh on this uh on this metal on this side now you see the d-ring there and you can see this little hook here I'll, I'll go over here and show you on the other side a little bit be a little bit easier to show you this is how i made it so that um you could um 
hold the doors open. Um, I had seen a lot of different, uh, a lot of different ideas on how to do this. I just basically took a piece of rod, heated it up and bent it, welded a washer on that end or a piece of flat, flat metal, took a tube, uh, fished it on there before I bent it or before I welded that um, washer on there and then welded it on here. It works really good. So basically you take this and you go to dump it and you swing it around to that D-ring and you open the D-ring up. There you go. That captures the, uh, captures the door and prevents it from uh, opening up there. So that's why the D-rings are there. Um, they're also a really good place when you have the tarp that you roll out on uh, on top of here and hook it onto the hooks in the back. Um, the uh, if you have if you have a uh, rod or whatever, which I have never gotten to uh, on the end of that tarp, you can hook it onto the hooks there, or you can just wrap it over the end and bungee cord it to the D rings, and that's what I've been doing, and that works uh, that works quite well. Now, the other thing that um, I might actually try to do at some point in the future here, I don't know if you can see, um, but down here, the uh, wires that are hanging down, hanging down below, which I need to address at some point, um, I didn't weld any wire attachment points on this trailer, and uh, I wish I did, because there's, no, uh, there's no good place to attach the wires, and... Um, so that is something that you'll probably see at some point in the future on this thing. So while we're under here, I'll go ahead and show you the uh, hinge point. If I can, let's see if I can move the mud flap out of the way. So that's what, uh, that's what I did. I think that that's a piece of um, three quarter or one inch plate, something like that with a, um, a bolt or a pin through. I cannot remember, I don't think, um, there's a uh, grease fitting in there. Um, I it's something I probably should have done, but uh, didn't do. Big heavy piece of um, of angle that those two uh, hinges are sitting in there, and that is um, welded into into the frame of the trailer, which uh, stops back here. Um, as far as bracing for the frame. <clears throat> Come underneath here. The um, that is where the hoist is underneath there. That is a very heavy wall piece of box tubing. I think that's uh, four by five. I can't remember now what the uh, what the thickness of that is, um, but it's a very thick thick piece of steel. And then uh, there's a piece of uh, channel there. And then in the front up there, it's a piece of uh, quarter inch quarter inch plate you can see I have to um, weld some attachment points for the the hose there because the little clips that I had did not uh, did not hold but uh, I'll see I don't know if the battery's charges on this thing or not let's see if it'll raise up a little bit so I can show you what's underneath nope what do you know and I just it's it, this uh, pendant is just sitting here. I can move it around. It's on a big cord. But I'll just raise it up a little bit so I can show you guys underneath here a little bit better what it looks like <clears throat> and how it's set up. So I don't remember, uh, I don't remember what the capacity is for this hoist. Um, it is a pretty, pretty heavy hoist. I've had uh, 10,000 pounds in this trailer before and I stumped it just fine, especially if you load it towards the, towards the back of the trailer. Um, it will dump quite a bit. Um, I had that, you can see a little bit better, that piece of box tubing that's there. Um, that is a very strong piece of box tubing. I have not bent anything on this in all of my... Uh, you know, I've overloaded it a little bit a couple times and I have not bent it. Um, I think there's a piece of five inch um, channel. And uh, so far, um, it's remained straight. You know, it hasn't, uh, it hasn't bent there. And uh, you can see how it's, uh, 
how it's welded over on uh, over on that side of the uh, the frame there. But um, we got the angle in the in the back there for a brace. Um, we've got a piece of channel here, and another piece where the the hoist um, comes and rests on it. Uh, the little three inch piece of channel there. Um, we've got the um, axle sitting on a uh, piece of uh, channel that's welded to the to the frame. You can kind of see how that is. And uh, there's a piece of angle that runs all the way across there for uh, bracing on the front uh, front spring hanger mount. And um, hindsight's 2020. I probably should have um, capped the end of that channel. So we don't get rust problems, but oh well. Um, and then we've got the the uh, piece of box tubing there, and then this piece of channel which captures the bed when it comes down and rests there. And then you can see the front here, where we have that piece of quarter inch uh, quarter inch plate. Now for this trailer, um, I've ran several different dump traders. Like I said, I used to rent them and I'd borrow some traders and I never liked the traders that were a uh, power up, power down, uh, just because I feel like you're wasting battery power, uh, bringing the trader down. So with this one, I have, uh, it's just gravity, gravity down and I can get, uh, two more, uh, well, not two more, but I can get, uh, double the, um, capacity out of the battery uh almost just by um by that fact alone now if you really want to get um nice with one of these things um you do a uh, a pump that has a power up gravity down or a power down option they make pumps like that and uh i've thought about getting one of those when i increase the pump capacity for the fluid so it'll actually dump all of the way i've thought about getting one of those just for just for fun that way now the only other mistake i made on this trailer that you can see <laughs> is uh i think is it back here yeah it's back here um did not uh measure the cross members correctly on that and that cross member would get into the tire uh, you say, well, I compromised the structural integrity by cutting that one out. Well, they're 16 inch on center cross members, and I have never had an issue on this trader with um, with anything bending by cutting out that one right there. Uh, the outside of the trader is uh, just a heavy angle um, for the cross members. The sides are two by four box tubing. Um, I think I mentioned that before. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that is the, um, uh, that is the gooseneck dump trader that I built. Um, it was a, it was a fun project, uh, fun project to do. Um, I wish I had filmed more of this trailer, um, back when I was, uh, back when I was doing it because, um, it was, uh, it was a fun project and it would have made a, uh, a very good video so along the lines of uh talking about uh, videos it was brought to my attention um by somebody regarding my last uh video that i posted uh, about the uh, flatbed build for my semi i just wanted to clarify something after i after i watched the video and uh kind of thought about it um i wanted to clarify something um when i was saying that um you know, I can only do fun projects in the winter and that sort of thing. I want to, I want to be clear that, uh, I am still going to be posting videos, um, along the same schedule as I have right now. Uh, I hesitate and hesitated to, uh, you know, come out and say what kind of, a a, a vid video schedule that I'm, I'm doing just because, uh, you know, my schedule is such that I can't always uh, post videos at the same time, you know, every week or whatever. But I try to at least do one video a week. Um, as you've seen, though, I've been doing about two videos a week. That is kind of what I have been trying to uh, trying to do for you guys. But uh, that is not going to change um, that the flatbed build is, is on hold right now until the weather gets a little bit nicer. 
um i am still going to be posting posting videos um it might not be about that that flatbed until the weather improves but i'm still gonna be posting videos about things there's still a lot of things that i have left to do um this winter and in the coming days with uh mechanic projects and such so along the lines of um other videos that uh i'm gonna be making here i'll go ahead and uh kind of give you a uh a little sneak peek as to the next um the next video uh that i'm going to be making here um you probably wonder why i have uh, both uh traders parked side by side here um there is a reason for that I'll walk over here and I'll show you if I can smack my head on the gooseneck hitches as I walk underneath them here. So this is my uh, my other gooseneck trailer that I have. Uh, it's a Big Tex uh, 20, what do they call it? A 20 plus 5, 20 plus 4, 20 plus 6, I don't remember what it is. It's about 25 foot long. It's a 20 foot deck with a 5 foot beaver tail dovetail whatever it is you want to call it um i bought this trader back i believe it's a 2014 uh brand new um this has been an amazing trailer for what it is there are some things i don't like about it um but uh overall this trailer has been a very very good trailer uh, to me it's got quite literally hundreds of thousands of miles on it um still on the original bearings on it on the on the axle no i take that back did i replace i might have replaced some bearings on it i did a brake job on it once um but uh it's been a very good trailer i've hauled a ridiculous amount of stuff with this thing um everything from things that you shouldn't haul with one of them to uh equipment to uh, my very first kenworth truck i actually brought home on this trailer because the uh the air leaks were so bad i couldn't drive it home and uh, it was short enough that it just barely fit on this trailer and i hauled it home that way um it pulls very very nice it doesn't have the bracing that i would like it flexes a little bit too much i think that um has to do with the fact that it's also getting older and more worn out and the steel is kind of getting fatigued um there is no cracks that i know of well okay i take that back there is a small crack that i need to fix on it um back by the dovetail but that's from loading and unloading stuff there's no cracks on the frame it's a very very well built trailer um however i've always said if i was going to get another one of these things i would build it um, I would not buy it, even if um, it costs the same to build it as it did to buy it. Just because there are some things, little things that I would like to uh, be different. Um, I would like it different if I was if I was to get one more customized to to my thing. And um, I apologize if the camera is a little shaky. I don't have any gloves on, and it's a little a little cold outside. I've been out here for a little bit so you have to apologize the uh camera shake here if i if it is uh if the camera's shaking a little bit but um as far as what the next project is well you might have guessed it by now i'm gonna build a gooseneck trailer um a gooseneck flatbed trailer um haven't really decided on the sizes and how i'm gonna configure it um it will be something very similar to this trailer here um it will have a dovetail it will not have these flip up ramps um just for my application for what i use the trader for um these ramps are nice they're convenient for what i do with farming and hauling hay and such um i do not like them um they get in the way and it's five foot of wasted trader space that you can't really i mean i've built things to you know set on here so that i can haul hay or whatever and it's just it's not a very efficient use of space for what i for my particular application um i've been around a lot of different gooseneck trailers and uh the trader that i would i'm going to build is going to have a, a dovetail that uh, pops up 
with uh, slide in slide in ramps. Um, you don't have very far to lift the ramps. The ramps don't have to be very long. And uh, that's just for my application, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, if it was somebody else, I mean, everybody has their personal preferences and, and uh, different use case scenarios um, where they like, um, you know, different tail pieces on the trader. I mean, there's some people that like just their, you know, straight back to one of these traders, no ramps or nothing. Uh, some people like the hydraulic dovetails. Those are nice. Um, but just for simplicity's sake and everything, we're just going to do a pop-up dovetail with uh, slide-in ramps. So, yeah, so that's the little, um, that's a little sneak peek to um, the next project on the channel. I don't know uh, if the beginning of that project is going to be the next video. Um, I have to do a couple other things first, so that might not actually be the next video. Um, it could be, though. It kind of depends on uh, how things go. So, uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video of me uh, rambling my mouth off here, showing you the, the two different trailers. Um, hopefully it was helpful to uh, some, of you, uh, some of you guys watching. And uh, if you like this sort of thing, consider subscribing and uh, I will catch you in the next video.